after the signing of the Not Too Young to Run bill in May 2018 by President Muhammadu Buhari. Across the globe, our guest today is recognized as one of the young governorship aspirants in the 2019 Nigerian general election, and perhaps from the 2012 London protest against the increase in fuel price in Nigeria by Nigerian diasporans hosted in the United Kingdom. My name is Akafele. Joining me in today's family conversation is Dr. Shia Ondu Akuma. Sir, can we start the conversation by knowing more about who you are, your education background, and what you do? Okay, um, Dr. Stephen Akuma, I'm the normal guy in Makodi, grew up in Makodi, high level. I went to Mount St. Gabriel Secondary School for my secondary education. Then I went to Benue State University, studied computer science. From there, I proceeded to United Kingdom, to Coventry University, where I studied uh, software development for my master's. Then I came back, worked for some time, and I went back again for a PhD program in computing. I started and I completed my PhD in 2016. Then I came back to join the services of Bedway State University to continue working as a lecturer. Then I went into partisan politics. In my dream to better the lives of Benue people and residents. And I was not successful, and I came back to what I do. Basically, I teach at Benue State University and also visit at Federal University of Agriculture, Makodi. Then I have a consultancy firm, a company called Sachs Computers. We are into a range of development of different software and also in computer training. And I think it's the first of its kind in uh, Makodi because we train people in areas that uh, formerly were not found here, mostly in Abuja and Lagos. So we brought ICT closer to the people. Then uh, me to have a foundation to say, Stephen Akuma Network, who are into voter education, youth reorientation, intra dialogue for peace, and also I'm into research. My area of interest is artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data analytics, human computer interaction, personalization, and information retrieval. I think that is the uh, little I can give. Maybe if, with your further questions, I can explain more. Surprisingly, you did not mention to us that you are also an author because I came across a book you published about your NYSC experience titled NYSC, Sowing the Seed of National Unity, where I personally got to know that Shiaundu is also your name. What is the meaning of Shiaundu? In Tib language, Shiaundu, meaning Uyakachi, on your own part, you've done your own part, so you, you, you leave every other thing to God. So you, just like I've done my own part, I've tried, I leave the rest to God. The God should take over from there, that kind of thing. Steve has more contextual meaning than in English. She on the remain God. You can just put it that way, literally. I was pronouncing your name as She Aundu, but now I know that the right pronunciation is She Aundu. Thanks for the education on how to pronounce your name correctly and its meaning. Like you know, few do get offended when their names are pronounced incorrectly. Could you tell us more about your roots of belonging? Okay, I, I am a human being from Africa, from West Africa, from Nigeria, from Benue State, from Gwe local government, from Injiriv, from Bajen, from Bama. So that wow. is where I'm from. I'm from local government. Gwe East local government. Right. Taraku is in Injury is that correct? Yes, Taraku is a town in Injury Reef. Injury Reef is bigger than that, but Taraku is the main town. If you can, could you educate us more about Injury Reef? Okay, you know the Masse people, we have Injury Reef, we have Ngoho, we have Yonu. Uh, mostly the Yonu people are those you see in Payangu, that's their major town. Ngoho people are those you see in Ali, that's the major town, the Injury people. 
are part of the massive people in Tara. Although we have the massive people that are Ogondo in Api. So by the injury, you see, Bakian Council Ward, once you come to Taraku, it's made up of the injury people, which is Penaba, and we also have the Uge Council Ward. So we are the Bakian Council Ward, and I am from Bama. Our place is very close to Otupo. We share the boundary with the Idomas. We share boundary with the Gedes in Obi local government. Interesting on sharing boundaries with Otupo and Obi local government. Give us an example of the relationship between the three major ethnic groups in Benue State. How do you interact? There's a central market in Otupo. And if you go there, almost everybody is the tea, the, the Aku market. It's the tea people that sell there. And these people are directly from my village. You know, because of the bad, uh, the fact that there's no road and most of people are poor, they trick long distances to that market. And also we intermarry, like my great grandmom is from Upu area in Otupo. So we've been living like brothers and sisters for a very long time. Doctor, I believe you are married. Yes, I'm married to my lovely wife. What was the magic that you see in your wife? For you, what was the connection? that made you to say yes this is my wife i try not to bring my family to the public but i think to me it was a pat pat is spelled as p-i-e-t-y that is having you see that zeal for the love of god you see that it's not a pretentious one or going to church you just see that heart of sincere person and honest person so yes she's beautiful but what actually made me to go and marry her is the heart that she has the PAT she has i think that is uh to me that was what interest interested me tell us how do you manage personal life teaching business and humanitarian work well it's just multitasking try to keep the time try to do what you know make a clear timetable of your activities and be disciplined enough to keep to it if you have lectures, you have to be in the class, you have to attend to students, you have to be in your office. And if you have your spare time for consultancy, you have to stay in your business and consult. Then if you have to do community efforts, you also have to create time for that purpose. So it's just about being disciplined. You shouldn't procrastinate. You should know that if I have to go for this at this time, I have to be there. So with that, you can manage your day-to-day -day activities. Also with family anyway, you also have to be a family man, you know. Describe your dream Benue. I see a Benue that, that we stand tall above all other states in terms of economic development, in terms of education, in terms of human and capital development. I see that and I just pray the Benue people should wake up to see the dream and so that we can collectively pursue it together. How? By our actions and inactions. If we have a dream to be the greatest, then all hands must be on deck and all stones should be left on turn to see that we pursue that dream for our children and the children's children to come. So, but the level we are going, I don't think we are working so hard to achieve that dream. I believe people are tired of dreaming of a better Benway. But what do we need to do to achieve our desired Benway state? Well, all stakeholders need to be involved. The youth, the elders, the religious bodies, and also uh, those in government. It's something that is all encompassing and has to do with everybody. For the young man, what am I doing as a person to add value to the system? For the elder statesmen, what am I doing, maybe upon retirement, to add value to the system? For the farmers, what am I doing? Am I trying to add productivity to the system or am I trying to cause problems to the system? We, it's something that we have to and see where we are doing right and where we are not doing right and see how we can do right and make the state work well. But as for now, we are trying, but we are not trying enough. How do you mean? As you can see, this is like 20 years of democracy, 21 years of democracy. And, you know, considering the amount of money that has have entered our states from 1999 to date, considering the interventions from foreign bodies too, 
uh, we are not where we are supposed to be. And the governance keep on retrogressing. We used to have a prayer call that we have everything we have today. Talk about the modern market, talk about the secretariat, talk about the stadium, talk about roads, schools, and everything. And not just only in Benue State. If you go to Kogi, find out the things he has done. Things like the Ida Women's Center, the Training Institute, the technical schools, they are all in Kogi State now. And he has done much of these things also in Benue State. So that is how governance should be. People should be able to point at A or B that you've done, right? And also learn from that. Uh, well, subsequently, I think we are actually retrogressing. Adasu came in and also did well. Adasu created a university, and it's because of Adasu that I'm this educated to talk to you because I attended Benue State University. Formerly, what I found here is to go to one diploma program, unit just Makodi branch, or go to Bokolo, and that's it. And very few people were opportune to go to ABU or just, and that is if they get admission anyway. So what Adasu did was that he created something that has been able to put food on the table for almost every household in Benue State, and that is a legacy. From them, people have done, like the next civilian governor, Akumik, he's on, he invested in people, but unfortunately, our people are not like the Igbo people. So those that receive money and all that, they end up marrying up new wives and spending that money on frivolous things. So they did invest that, and it kept it progressing till today. And the future that I felt should be bright is not bright enough, the way we are going. Great reflection, Doctor. I was thinking that you will take us on the full journey of your observations on our civilian governors to date, including Siswan and our incumbent governor, Samuel Yoai Otom. Uh, Akume focused on human development. You know, when we came, almost everybody in Benue State were living in Face Me, I Face You. But after the first semester, you see, almost people were building flats. It was building unoccupied quarters, the BIPC quarters, the opening of, of roads. Then it was just high level, Wurukun, Wadata. Then we have places like Achusa and, and other places which he opened up. So he focused on human development. That if an Igbo man, you give them five, you give an Igbo man, that, that Igbo guy will invest that money and probably use it for something else so that it can move from maybe a low income earner to a medium income earner. But this was not the case in Benue State because most of the guys that benefited from these generous efforts of Akume could not use that to add to their farms or businesses. Rather, they married more wives. Then you know, Suswan started very well. Suswan's 100 days was like uh, the miracle in Kenya. I don't think any government in the United of Suswan's 100 days in office. He started very well, I don't know. Then he started playing national politics and he lost track of everything. He lost track of everything. And I, I felt very bad because he was a young man that we can see as a potential president of Nigeria from the chief stock, uh, having married somebody from the Yoruba area. And he, he just lost track and his friends were not there to help him. Uh, most of them were more concerned about his social life than his personality of helping him to be that person we can present to the nation and say this young man can be president of this country well he did some things obviously but not as we we felt he will, he will beat a pair record the way he started and he didn't end up go that way for tom i always say he can get credit for the anti-open crazy in view but obviously, you know, that came from the efforts of Benue people, the religious bodies, the young people, and everybody who walked the streets to ensure that that bill was passed into law. But he can also get credit because he signed it into law. Then there are still talks, but how powerful they were, he has tried to clip their wings so they are not that powerful the way they were, some of them. Then again, in the area of, uh, at the point, Benue State was getting to the state of Sodom and Gomorrah, where prostitution was getting so high that even people under age girls were lured into this illicit business, where he has been able to curtail that because he doesn't have that lifestyle anyway. Outside that, the governor has not done anything. And I always say these things. It's better you tell him the truth so that he can use the remaining part of his tenure 
to add one or two. Then just keep quiet and allow it go. Then after, these same people that are around him, they are telling him you're doing everything fine. At the first group of people that were insulting after May 29, 2023. So uh, in his own case, I don't see anything to assess aside these things I told you. As a Benue State governorship aspirant in 2019, what did you wanted to give to Benue State that is different? The first thing is sincerity of purpose. And that is what is lacking in leadership. Most of our leaders are not sincere. They will tell you A and they will do B. And here I was coming with the fact that people have trusted me because I've had smaller positions in the universities and all that. And they know my mindset towards these things. Next, I was coming with a foreign experience, having stayed abroad and understand how things work. Also the ICT area. And I, I focused my own campaign on agriculture and ICT. And I said that first, for us to do anything, we have to know the number of people in Benue State. If we don't do enumeration, you won't be able to know who and who is a citizen, who and who has no job, who and who needs fertilizer and all that. We first need to do that. Or if we don't do that, we'll continue in this motion movement. That was the first thing I said we are going to do. Then I said that, yes, we are going to build an ict back job center that will be able to know those that don't have job and create jobs for them. There are jobs you can create for people. And for those that don't have the skills, we are going to work on them to give them the necessary skills so that they can face the 21st century job environment. So the next was agriculture. You know, there are different value chains of this agriculture from the manufacturer to the processing plant. I would say in each of these days, we are going to fill the gap. And um, somehow, somehow, we were not elected. So it ended our rhetorics. But it was very inspiring, especially to the young men of Benue State and the youths. With your experience in politics so far, are you going to contest in 2023? I, I do things one step at a time. My future is in God's hands. It's he that gives me the direction to do and wherever he speaks, I move. So as for that one about my future, I leave that to God's hands. At the moment, I'm just trying to see how I can assist in social reorientation of the young people to find straight of what we want to get. And also thinking on how we can go into total education to help people understand that their vote matters and they shouldn't. I think these are the things that are priority to me now. Thank you, Doctor. In this first part of family conversation, I believe that we have a better understanding of who you are, your background, how you manage personal life, business, and teaching, the massive people, how the three major ethnic groups in Benue State do share boundaries, and how they interact, your Benue dream, and how you believe it's achievable, and also your reflection on all Benue State civilian governors to date. In the second part of family conversation with Dr. Stephen Shiaond Akuma, we will be discussing the standard of Computer Science Department, Benue State University. We will learn from his experience studying in the United Kingdom and how it was possible for him to sponsor his studies, that is Masters and PhD. We will also learn about his ICT business in Makodi and its challenges. And from his point of view, we will learn about Benue State partisan politics system. So do not miss out learning more in the next conversation. Thank you so much for joining us.